Hello everyone, um, hold on, I'm still adjusting. So, I know many of you enjoy the high production quality uh, of my channel, so today I've decided to up that once again by going a bit experimental, so rather than doing all the stupid hours of editing I always do for every video, this is just going to be one take, no editing, no getting rid of all the sounds that are kind of unpleasant. I have gum, by the way, I hope that's not a problem. It gets kind of smelly in here when I talk a lot and I have bad breath, so doing that. And I know all of you were expecting the scientist for my next video, but I've decided to cancel that, you know, the scientist, ugh, who wants that? Instead, I'm going to be doing one of the most famous fan fictions of all time, My Immortal. And some of you who are a bit younger on the internet may not remember My Immortal, but boy, was it a very amazing fan fiction. Uh, just very, very innovative for its time. Uh, ahead of its time. Oh, I think that's my, my furnace. Sorry about that. Uh, so, I'm gonna be reading, um, My Immortal by, uh, I don't really know who the author is, actually. Originally by Tara Gilesby, apparently. Yeah, it is a Harry Potter fan fiction. So, uh, let's begin. Uh, chapter 1. Author's note. Special fangs, get it, because I'm gothic, to my new girlfriend, you not in that way, Raven Bloody Tears 666 for helping me with the story and spelling. You rock, Justin, you to love of my depressing life, you rock too, as the number two. MCR rocks, with, with an X. Okay, now I, I think the story is beginning, I believe. The, the format is just so innovative, it's hard to tell where uh, reality begins and ends with this amazing story. My name is Ebony Darkness, and there happens to be a, an apostrophe uh, with darkness there. Uh, dementia Raven Way. See, dementia, that's such, a, that's such an interesting concept, because dementia is like forgetting things, so it's like... Why would you have that in your name? But maybe, you know, who knows? We'll find out. And I have long ebony hair, and that's how I got my name. Ah, that explains the darkness. With purple streaks and red tips that reaches my mid-back and icy blue eyes like limpid tears. And a lot of people tell me I look like Amy Lee, author's note. If you don't know who she is, then get da the hell out of here. I'm not related to Gerard Way, but I wish I was because he's a major fucking hottie. Uh, language warning, and uh, parental advisory content warning as well for later things going on. There's a bit of mature stuff in here. Uh, my furnace is off now. Woohoo! I'm a vampire, but my teeth are straight and white. I have pale white skin. I'm also a witch, and I go to magic school. I go to a magic school called Hogwarts in England, where I'm the seventh year I'm 17. I'm a goth, in case you couldn't tell, and I wear mostly black. I love Hot Topic, and I would buy all my clothes from there. For example, today I was wearing a black corset with matching lace around it, and a black leather miniskirt, pink fishnets, and black combat boots. I was wearing black lipstick, white foundation, black eyeliner, and red eyeshadow. I was walking outside Hogwarts. It was snowing and raining, so there was no sun. Interesting weather patterns going on here, which I was very happy about. A lot of preps stared at me. I put up my middle finger at them. Hi, Ebony, shouted a voice. I looked up. It was Draco Malvoy. What's up, Draco? I asked. Nothing, he said shyly. But then I heard my friends call me, and I had to go away. Author's note. Is it good? Please tell me fangs. Now for chapter two. Author's note. Fangs to bloody tears 666 for helping me with the chapter. BTW preps stop flaming my story, okay? The next day I woke up in my bedroom. It was snowing and raining again. I opened the door of my coffin and drank some blood from the bottle I had. My coffin was black and ebony inside it was a hot pink velvet with black lace on the ends. I got out of my coffin and took of my giant MCR t-shirt, which I used for pajamas. 
So he uses very unconventional sentence structure and use of um, pronouns and adverbs and such. Where was I? Pajamas. Instead, I put on a black leather dress, a pentagram necklace, combat boots, and black fishnets on. I put on four pairs of earrings and pierced my ears and put my hair into it in a kind of messy bun. My friend Willow, author's note, Raven, this is you, woke up and grinned at me. She flipped her long waist-length raven black hair with pink streaks and opened her forest green eyes. She put on her Marilyn Manson t-shirt with black mini, fishnets, and pointy high-heeled boots. We put on our makeup, black lipstick, white foundation, and black eyeliner. OMFG, I saw you talking to Draco Malfoy yesterday, she said excitedly. Yeah, so, I said, blushing. Do you like Draco? She asked as we went out of the Slytherin common room and into the great hall. No, I fucking don't, I shouted. Yeah, right, she exclaimed. Just then, Draco walked up to me. Hi, he said. Hi. I replied flirtily. Guess what? He said. What? I asked. Well, good Charlotte are having a concert in Hogsmeade, he told me. Oh. My. Fucking. God! I screamed. I love GC. They're my favorite band, besides MCR. Well, do you want to go with me? He asked. I gasped. End of chapter two. Hold on, I gotta press next here on the page. Go to the next chapter. Chapter three. Author's note. Stop flaming the story, preps, okay? Otherwise, fangs to the gothic people for the good reviews. Fangs, Ajin, Raven. Oh yeah, BTW, I don't own this or the lyrics for good Charlotte. Good Charlotte. That's, that's spelled C-H-R-A-L-O-T-T-E. On the night of the concert, I put on my black lace-up boots with high heels. Underneath them were red, ripped fishnets. Then I put on black leather, a black leather mini-dress with all this corset stuff on the back and front. I put on matching fishnets on my arms. I straightened my hair and made it look all spiky. I felt a little depressed then, so I slit one of my wrists, as one does, I ripped, I read a depressing book while I waited for it to stop bleeding and I listened to some GC. I painted my nails black and put on tons of black eyeliner. Then I put on some black lipstick. I didn't put on foundation because I was pale anyway. I drank some human blood so I was ready to go to the concert. I went outside. Draco was waiting there in front of his flying car. He was wearing a simple plan t-shirt. They would play at the show too. Baggy black skater pants, black nail polish, and a little eyeliner. Author's note. A lot for cool boys. Were it okay? Hi, Draco, I said in a depressed voice. Hi, Ebony, he said back. We walked to his black flying Mercedes Benz, the license plate said 666, and flew to the place with the concert. On the way, we listened excitedly to Good Charlotte and Marilyn Manson. We smoked cigarettes and drugs. When we got there, we hopped out of the car. We went to the mosh pit at the front of the stage and jumped up and down as we listened to Good Charlotte. You come on in cold, you're covered with blood. So they're all so happy you've arrived. The doctor cuts your cord, hands you to your mom. She sets you free into his life, sang Joel. I don't own the lyrics to that song. Joel is so fucking hot, I said to Draco, pointing to him as he sung, filling the club with his amazing voice. Suddenly, Draco looked sad. What's wrong? I asked, as we moshed to the music. Then I caught on. Hey, it's okay. I don't like him better than you, I said. Really? Draco asked sensitively and he put his arm around me all protective. Really, I said. 
Besides, I don't even know Joel, and he's going out with Hillary fucking Duff. I fucking hate that little bitch, I said disgustedly, thinking of her ugly blonde face. Because that is the part of the face, the part of the body, that has a color when it's blonde, the face. The night went on really well, and I had a great time. So did Draco. After the concert, we drank some beer and asked Benji and Joel for their autographs and photos with them. We got the GC concert tease. Draco and I crawled back into the Mercedes-Benz, but Draco didn't go back to Hogwarts. Instead, he drove his car into... the Forbidden Forest. Dun-dun-dun. I'm also not doing sound effects anymore. I'm doing it all just, you know, with my mouth. Save, edit time, all that. Try to, try to get quality content out to you faster. That's my goal here, really. Chapter 4. Author's Note. I said stop flaming okay. Ebony's name is N-O-B. Nut Mary Sue okay. Draco is so in love with her with her that he is acting deferent. They knew each other before okay. It's like it's like another language. It's like someone with a very exotic accent reading reading this syntax. Draco! I shouted. What the fuck do you think you're doing? Draco didn't answer, but he stopped the flying car, and he walked out of it. I walked out of it too, curiously. What the fucking hell? I asked angrily. Ebony? he asked. What? I snapped. Draco leaned in extra close, and I looked into his gothic red eyes. He was wearing colored contacts. Which revealed so much depressing sorrow and evilness. And then, suddenly, I didn't feel mad anymore. And then... Suddenly, as Draco, and Draco kissed me passionately, Draco climbed on top of me, and we started to make out keenly against a tree. He took of my, of my top. I took of his clothes. He even took of my bra. Then he put his thingy into my you-know-what, and we did it for the first time. Oh, 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 I screamed. I was beginning to get an orgasm. We started to kiss everywhere, and my pale body became all warm. And then... What the hell are you doing, motherfuckers? It was... Dumbledore! Dum-dum-dum. See, I told you, parental advisory warning is some very mature, um, deep, um, sophisticated subject matter we're dealing with here. Chapter 5, author's note. Stop! Flaming, if you flam, it mends you're a prep or a pauser. The only resin Dumbledore swore is cuz he had a headache, okay? And on top of dat, he was mad at dem for having sexes. P.S. I'm not updating until I get five good reviews. Dumbledore made Draco and I follow him. Hold on, I lost my place. I'm poking my tablet screen. He kept shouting at us angrily. You ludicrous fools, he shouted. I started to cry tears of blood down my pallid face. Draco comforted me. When we went back to the castle, Dumbledore took us to Professor Snape and Professor McGonagall, who were both looking very angry. They were having sexual intercourse in the Forbidden Forest, he yelled in a furious voice. Why did you do such a thing, you mediocre dunces? asked Professor McGonagall. How dare you? demanded Professor Snape. Oh, there's my furnace again. And then Draco shrieked, because I love her. Everyone was quiet. Dumbledore and Professor McGonagall still looked mad, but Professor Snape said, fine, very well. You may go up to your rooms. Draco and I went upstairs while the teachers glared at us. Are you okay, Ebony? Draco asked me gently. Yeah, I guess, I lied. I went to the girls' dorm and brushed my teeth and my hair and changed into a low-cut black floor-length dress with red lace all over it and in black high heels. When I came out, Draco was standing in front of the bathroom. He started to sing I Just Wanna Live by Good Charlotte, I was so flattered, even though he wasn't supposed to be there. We hugged and kissed. 
After that, we said goodnight, and he reluctantly went back to his room. Chapter 6. Author's note. Shidged up preps okay? P.S. Not update until you give me good rebows. The next day, I woke up in my coffin. I put on a black mini skirt that was all ripped up. Hmm. That made a good bubble. It was all ripped around the end, and a matching top with red skulls all over it, and high heeled boots that were black. I put on two pairs of skull earrings and crossed my ears, and two crosses in my ears. <laughs> Sorry about that. I spray painted my hair with purple. In the Great Hall, I ate some Count Chocula cereal with blood instead of milk and a glass of red blood. Suddenly, someone bumped into me. All the blood spilled over my top. Bastard! I shouted angrily. I regretted saying it when I looked up because I was looking into the pale white face of a gothic boy with spiky black hair and red streaks in it. He was wearing so much eyeliner that it was going down his face and he was wearing black lipstick. He didn't have glasses anymore, and now he was wearing red contact, contact lenses, just like Draco's, and there was no scar on his forehead anymore. He had manly stubble on his chin. He had a sexy English accent. He looked exactly like Joel Madden. He was so sexy that my body went all hot when I saw him. Kind of like an erection, only I'm a girl, so I didn't get one, you sicko. I'm so sorry, he said in a shy voice. That's all right. What's your name? I questioned. My name's Harry Potter, although most people call me vampire these days, he grumbled. Why? I exclaimed. Because I love the taste of human blood. <laughs> he giggled. Well, I'm a vampire, I confessed. Really? He whimpered. Yeah! I roared. We sat down to talk for a while. Then Draco came up behind me and told me he had a surprise for me. So I went away with him. Whoa. There's a love triangle going on here. Chapter 7. Bring Me to Life. Now, only at 7, do we have chapter 8. Author's note. Well, okay, you guys. I'm only writing this because I got five god reviews. In BTW, I won't write the next chapter till I get tin, tin god bonds. Staw flaming or I'll report you. Ebony isn't a Marie Sue, okay? She isn't perfect. She's a Satan it's. And she has problems. She's depressed for God's sake. Draco and I held our pale white hands with black nail polish as we went upstairs. I was wearing red Satanist sings on my nails and red nail polish. Author's note. See, does, does that sound lick Marusu to you? Question mark. I waved to Vampire. Dark misery was in his depressed eyes. I wish he was jealous of me that I was going out with Draco. Instead, we went upstairs. I went upstairs excitedly with Draco. We went to his room and locked the door. Then we started Frenching passively, and we took off each other's clothes enthusiastically. He felt me up before he took of my top then took off my black leather bra, and he took off his pants. We went on the bed and started making out naked, and then he put his boy's thingy in mine, and we had sex! See, is that stupid? Oh, Draco, Draco. I screamed while getting an orgasm when all of a sudden I saw a tattoo I had never seen before on Draco's arm. It was a black heart, with an arrow through it. On it, in bloody gothic writing, were the words, Vampire. I was so angry. You bastard! I shouted angrily, jumping out of the bed. No, no, but you don't understand. 
Draco pleaded, but I knew too much. No, you fucking idiot, I shouted. You probably have AIDS anyway. Uh, this author does not condone the uh, character slash, or this narrator does not um, condone or agree with the author's views on gay people and AIDS, by the way. Just letting everyone know that right now. I put on my clothes and huffily, all huffily, then stomped out. Draco ran out, even though he was naked, and I, he had a really big you-know-what, but I was too mad to care. I stomped out and did so until I was in Vampire's classroom, where he was having a lesson with Professor Snape and some other people. Vampire Potter, you motherfucker, I yelled. Chapter 8. Author's note. Stop flassing, okay? If you do, then you are a prep. Everyone in the class stared at me, and then Draco came into the room even though he was naked and started begging me to take him back. Ebony, it's not what you think, he screamed sadly. My friend B. Apostrophe Luddy Mary Smith, I smiled, smiled at me understatedly. She flipped her long, waist-length gothic black hair and opened her crimson eyes like blood. She was wearing, like blood that she was wearing, co contact lenses on. She had pale white skin and she was wearing white makeup on. Hermione was kidnapped when she was born. Her real parents are vampires and one of them is a witch, but Voldemort killed her, mother and father, committed suicide because she was depressed about it. She still has nightmares about it, and she is very haunted and depressed. It also turns out her real na last name is Smith, not Granger. Since she has converted to Satanism, she is in Slytherin now, not Gryffindor. What is it that you desire, you ridiculous dimwit? Snape demanded angrily in his cold voice, but I ignored him. Vampire, I can't believe you cheated on me with Draco, I shouted at him. Everyone gasped. I don't know why Ebony is so mad at me. I went out with Vampire, I'm by, and so is Ebony, for a while, but he broke my heart. He dumped me because he liked Brittany, a stupid preppy fucker. We were just good friends now. He had gone through horrible problems, and now he was gothic. Ha ha, I would hang out with a prep. Like I would hang out with a prep. But I'm not going out with Draco anymore, said Vampire. Yeah, fucking right. Fuck off, you bastard, I screamed, and ran out of the room and into the Forbidden Forest where I had lost my virility to Draco, and I started to bust into tears. Chapter 9. Author's note, stop flaming, okay? I didn't read... All the books. This is from the movie. Okay, is not my fault. If Dumble Dumbbell Door swears, best Swedes. I said he had a headache, and a resin snap doesn't lick Harry now. Is cause he's Christian and vampire. Is a satanist. Satanist. MCR rocks. I was so mad and sad. I couldn't believe Draco for cheating on me. I began to cry against a tree where I did it, against the tree where I did it with Draco. Such symbolism. It's so amazing. Then all of a sudden, a horrible man with red eyes and no nose and everything started flying towards me on a broomstick. He didn't have a nose. Basically like Dumbledore in the movie, like Voldemort in the movie, not Dumbledore. And he was wearing all black. But it wasn't. Ob but it was obvious he wasn't gothic. It was Voldemort. Surprise! No! I shouted in a scared voice. But then Voldemort shouted, "Imperious!" And I couldn't run away. Crookshanks! I shouted at him. Voldemort fell of his broom and started to scream. I felt bad for him, even though I'm a sadist. So I stopped. Ebony, he yelled, thou must kill Vampire Potter. I thought about Vampire and his sex eyes and his gothic black hair and how his face looks just like Joel Madden. 
I remember that Draco had said I didn't understand, so I thought, what if Draco went out with Vampire before I went out with him, and they broke up? No, Voldemort, I shouted back. Voldemort gave me a gun. No, please, I begged. Thou must, he yelled. If thou does not, then I shall kill thy beloved Draco. How did you know, I asked in a surprised way. Voldemort got a dude your so retarded look on his face. I apologize for the use of the word retarded. Again, this narrator does not condone the possibly derisive language that the author uses. Um, anyway, I hath telekinesis, he answered cruelly. And if thou doth not kill vampire, then thou know what will happen to Draco, he shouted. Then he flew away angrily on his broomstick. I was so scared and mad I didn't know what to do. Suddenly Draco came into the woods. Draco, I said. Hi. Hi, he said back, but his face was all sad. He was wearing white foundation and messy eyeliner, kind of like a pentagram. Get it? Between Joel Madden and Gerard Way. Are you okay? I asked. No, he answered. I'm sorry I got all mad at you, but I thought you cheated on me, I expelled. That's okay, he said, all depressed, and we went back into Hogwarts together, making out. Some impressive multitasking right there. Chapter 10. Author's note. Stop it, you gay fags, if you do not lick my story, then fuck off. P.S. It turns out B apostrophe Luddy Mary isn't a muggle a furt all and she and vampire are evil that's why they moved houses okay is that perfectly clear okay good i was really scared about voldemort all day i was even upset went to rehearsals with my gothic metal band bloody gothic rose 666 i am the lead singer of it and i play guitar People say that we sound like a cross between GC Slipknot and MCR. Other people in the band are B apostrophe Luddy Mary, Vampire Draco Run. Although we call him Diabolo now, he has black hair with blue streaks in it. And Hargrid. Only today Draco and Vampire were depressed, so they weren't coming and we wrote songs instead. I knew Draco was probably slitting his wrists. He wouldn't die because he is a vampire. And the only way he can kill a vampire is with a C-R-O-S-S. -S -S. There's no way I'm writing that. Or steak. S-T, uh, by the way, steak is spelled S-T-E-A-K. So like, you know, like a ribeye or something. And Vampire was probably watching a depressing movie like The Corpse Bride. I put on a black leather skirt that showed off my boobs. A uh, black leather skirt. Shirt. That's the one. That showed off my boobs and a tiny matching mini skirt. Uh, excuse me. Oh, okay, there we go. Sorry, I had McDonald's for breakfast. It showed off my boobs and tiny matching mini skirt that said simple plan on the butt. You might think I'm a slut, but I'm really not. We were singing we were singing a cover of Helena at the end of a song, and at the end of the song I suddenly burst into tears. Ebony, are you okay? B apostrophe Luddy Mary asked in a concerted voice. What the fuck do you think? I asked angrily. And then I said, Well, Voldemort came and the fucking bastard told me to fucking kill Harry, but I don't want to kill him because he's really nice, and even if he did go out with Draco, but he didn't kill Harry, but I don't kill Harry, then Voldemort will fucking kill Draco. I burst into tears. Suddenly, Draco jumped out from behind a wall. Why didn't you fucking tell me? He shouted. How could you, 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 fucking poser muggle bitch? See is doubt out of character. I started to cry and cry. Draco started to cry, too all sensitive. Then he ran out crying. We practiced for one more hour. Then suddenly, Dumbbell Door walked in angrily. His eyes were all fiery, and I knew this time it wasn't because he had a headache. What have you done? He started to cry wisely. 
see debts see that see debts basically not swearing cuz this this time he was really upset and you will see why ebony draco has been found in this room he committed suicide by slitting his wrists dun 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 I think this might actually be a good place to end it. So yeah, this is part one of My Immortal. Uh, please like, favorite, and um, subscribe, all that stuff. Hit the little subscription bell for quality content like this. Uh, I'll be doing two videos a week from now on, hopefully. Uh, that's a calendar week, so like, um, you know, from Sunday to Saturday. Um, definitely. So yeah, thank you for listening. I hope that you enjoy this uh, shift in this um, shift in a paradigm, so to speak, and uh, I hope that this quality brings my content to new heights of enjoyment. So, see ya, bye. And that's it. My that neighbors upstairs are moving around. Mm, that's a problem. Happy April Fool's Day, by the way. <laughs> I've been wanting to do this for so long, honestly. <laughs> And the scientist should be coming out soon. Um, kind of had a rough work day yesterday, but it's all good. I meant to work like all night, but I just got home and like passed out. Which is why this is posting like in the afternoon, because I haven't recorded what I need to record yet. But that's okay. It's all good. Have fun. Be safe. Don't, um, don't believe everything you see. Uh, Tippy waitresses, etc. Goodbye.